Oh, man. You know, I'd never see a big deer like the one we just saw. It doesn't make my heart beat a little sounder, a little firmer. I'm sure that you, as a deer hunter, and a guy that loves the outdoors, must have that same feeling. I'm Ray Scott. I'm the president of the Whitetail Institute of North America. And you may know me as a bass fisherman, but I've been involved for more than 10 years in the study and research of whitetail deer. I founded the Whitetail Institute of North America several years ago to help answer some of the questions we all have about these great animals. We're particularly interested in how you and I, as hunters and landowners, might be able to produce quality bucks like the one we just saw. Although the Institute serves as a clearinghouse of information on white-tailed deer, we also conduct our own research programs, primarily in the areas of genetics and nutrition. We're saving, for example, the semen from trophy bucks for future use in artificial insemination. And we're monitoring separate herds of deer from different regions of the nation to try to determine the natural genetic differences between them. I believe that the Institute's research, conducted with the experts from several major universities like Auburn University in Auburn, Alabama, and Stephen F. Austin University in Nacogdoches, Texas has produced a major breakthrough in the study of quality white-tailed deer. A breakthrough that every landowner or hunting club in America can use to grow better quality deer. That breakthrough was a new concept in supplemental feeding that supports a deer during those two valuable, very important parts of the year, right after the rut, and of course during that part of the year when a deer is pushing antlers and trying to develop antlers, and of course, when the doe is carrying her fawns. During the next few minutes, you're going to see three new innovations that you can employ that will incredibly increase the quality of the bucks and does in your hunting area. Also, how to produce a deer that you will be proud of. And also, once these deer are on your land, how the use of the new deer decoys can help bring trophy deer into range. The three products and concepts you are about to see will follow in three segments. First, everything you need to know about Imperial Whitetail Clover. Segment two, the reason you should use mineral vitamin supplements. And the third segment, the fantastic effective use of deer decoys. Here at the Whitetail Institute, we believe the planting of food plots should be more than just simply a bait to draw deer out of the woods so you can shoot them. We've committed ourselves to producing a forage food that actually benefits the deer during the time they need it most. And because it's just landowners and hunters all agree that three key elements make up a quality deer. These are genetics, age, and nutrition. Basically, what the family tree looks like how many years the deer lives, and what he eats. As a hunter and landowner, you can directly control two of these factors, age and nutrition. And believe it or not, by controlling these, you will also help control the genetics. That's right, you can have some control over genetics too. By selective hunting and population control, which is part of controlling the age of your deer, and ensuring the deer always have plenty of high-protein nutritional food available, you will have much healthier deer. And scientists now believe does play a tremendous role genetically in the quality of the bucks they produce. When you manage your bucks properly, the fawns will be born at the right time of year, in the spring, and at the proper weight. The latest research shows the weight of the fawn has a great effect on the quality of his antlers later in life. If a fawn is born at a substandard weight, which happens if the mother hasn't had enough of the proper nutrition to eat, the fawn is already starting life with one strike against him, and it's hard as heck to catch up. Some never do. Age, of course, is the easiest of all the factors to control. You got a choice. You either pull the trigger or you don't pull the trigger. If you want a big, high-tined, heavy 10-pointer, you better not shoot at everything you see. It nearly always takes at least three and a half to four and a half years to produce a truly outstanding head of antlers. The average age of the buck shot each season in the United States is between one and a half and two and a half years of age. It's no wonder we have no more true trophy-class deer than we have. 
Nutrition control takes a little more effort, and that's one of the reasons we've been studying it so hard here at the Whitetail Institute. We've test planted dozens and dozens and dozens of different species of forage over hundreds of acres, and we'll continue to do so in the years ahead. We know there's no magic bean we can throw on the ground, watch the deer eat, and have them grow into trophy class bucks. I just can't emphasize enough the importance of nutrition to the growth and general well-being of a deer. And nobody in the world that I know of is more uh, knowledgeable about the subject of nutrition and the building of trophy animals than James Kroll. James Kroll is a doctor and a professor at Stephen F. Austin University in Nacogdoches, Texas. In my book, he's one of the leading experts in wildlife, specifically as it relates to nutrition. He's got the distinction of seeing his handiwork of food plots and supplemental feeding producing two Boone and Crockett deer, and one other deer who missed Boone and Crockett book by just one point. Uh, Dr. Kroll, I know that it's important. You've proved it uh, to yourself, and uh, tell us what, what your, what's your gut feeling about the importance of it uh, as we as, as normal uh, and average deer hunters are concerned. Well, Ray, our, our attitudes about supplemental feeding have changed dramatically over the last few years. Uh, as wildlife biologists, we started out uh, recommending the public not do it. And then we suddenly realized that the white-tailed deer really is no different from domestic livestock, that, that we're going to have to get involved in supplemental feeding, especially with the interest in deer management that we're seeing today. And most, uh, it's unfortunate, but most of our ranges in this country do not supply uh, a high level of nutrition for deer. And you've already outlined earlier uh, one of our biggest problems, of course, in the country is that, that we're not letting our deer grow up. So the two basic principles in deer management are, are pretty simple, and that is let them acquire some age and give them adequate nutrition. And uh, supplemental feeding, especially using food plots, is, is economically feasible. Uh, most of our food plots are, uh, the forage is costing us probably one or two cents a pound, which is about one-tenth of what a pelleted ration would cost. So we feel like it's real cost effective. Imperial whitetail clover was specifically developed for whitetail deer and other wildlife. Our research has shown that no single variety or type of clover can possibly do what imperial whitetail clover can do. That is, to give us a combination of factors we required. A long growing season, peak production during the deer's stress periods, cold and heat tolerance, and a high nutritional value. Why clover? as opposed to the more commonly planted stuff like oats, wheats, rye that hunting clubs have been planting for years. To answer that, let me introduce Dr. Wiley Johnson, professor of agronomy at Auburn University, who was instrumental in the formulation of imperial whitetail clover. Dr. Johnson has a worldwide reputation for his research and development of clovers and forages. What we're trying to promote here at the Whitetail Institute is not only a new food, but a new concept in wildlife planting. Up to now, Hunters planted a food plot like oats, wheat, or rye, purely and simply to lure deer out of the woods so that they could see them and then shoot them. Our concept is to provide a highly nutritious food source for deer from late winter through the spring and into the summer. This is when the deer need the food most for body strength. And it is also a period when the antlers are grown. Give a deer plenty to eat during this time period and you'll see the results on top of his head in the fall. The cereal grain foods like oats, wheat, and rye grow quickly in the colder weather of the hunting season. But by February, in most areas, they have seeded out and aren't much good for anything anymore. This is precisely when deer need supplemental nutrition. The various clovers we have blended in Imperial White Tail Clover combine the best features of each to provide a high level of protein and minerals to replace what the deer have lost and to sustain them through the growing cycle. Imperial whitetail clover is a perennial. This means that you don't have to replant every year. Once you get it going, it should last at least two to three years, and sometimes even longer. Here at the Institute, we have one stand of imperial whitetail now in its fourth growing season, and we've never touched it since the original planting. By blending several clovers, we also have a product adapted to a wide range of soil and climate conditions. In fact, the Institute produces several different regional blends of Imperial Whitetail, 
for specific soil and climatic conditions. One of the newest is Imperial 270, which is best suited for drier upland soils in which clover traditionally does not do well. In the past year, Imperial Whitetail has been grown successfully not only here in Alabama, but also in West Virginia, Texas, and many other states. In early research, we found that the only thing that Imperial Whitetail clover would not do is to start growing real fast. Most clovers by nature are slow starting. That is, it takes a little time to really get cranked up and growing. We recognize this problem and turned Dr. Johnson loose to solve it, and solve it he did. We've added another exclusive ingredient to our formulation called Jumpstart. Its sole purpose is to provide quick ground cover for the deer to start eating while the rest of the Imperial Whitetail is getting underway. Now, I can hear you asking the question, I'm not a farmer. I'm a deer hunter. Why should I spend time and money planting something when the deer already have plenty to eat in the woods where I hunt? One man who can better answer that question than anybody I know is Dr. James Kroll. The nutritional aspects of deer management is one area where Mother Nature often lets us down. A typical acre of woods like we see here may produce only about 500 pounds of usable forage. And unfortunately, much of that forage is not available when deer need it. That's where food plots can really do us a good job. One acre of a perennial clover, such as imperial whitetail clover, when properly planted and on the right soils, can produce as much forage as 40 to 50 acres of wooded habitat. And the best part of all is that it's about 25% protein. Protein deer can and will use directly for antler growth. Clover to whitetail deer is just like fish or beef to humans. A small helping provides a lot of nutrition. There are some other advantages to selecting a perennial clover, some of which Ray and Dr. Johnson have already mentioned. First, a perennial grows all year round. This is important as it is not so much how much is produced, but when the forage is available. A perennial stays tender and succulent all year. Other traditional food plots, such as cereal grains, oats, wheat, and rye, are productive four to five months, seed and then die. You can leave corn up all year as a wildlife food, but it is very low in protein, so it doesn't contribute anything to actual body or antler growth. Imperial whitetail clover appears to be more broadly adapted as some 35,000 landowners planted it last season. The Institute currently has field tests underway in all but three states. Dr. Kroll just mentioned something about imperial whitetail clover I want to reiterate to you which is the incredible high yield of forage it produces. This, too, was one of our criteria in producing a deer food. To you, as a planter, however, it takes on added importance. It means that you don't have to plant your entire hunting club or your farm with it. All it takes is a small amount of your land, usually no more than 2 to 5% of your total acre acreage. Remember, a good one-acre food plot of imperial whitetail clover can produce as much forage as 50 to 60 acres of woodlands. Another aspect to consider is that your clover will draw deer from the surrounding areas. Now, believe it or not, you're going to literally pull deer from your neighbor's property. And deer certainly aren't the only critters that enjoy imperial whitetail clover. Wild turkey love it, as this big old gobbler shows. Even the bears enjoy it. Now let's talk about the actual process of planting imperial whitetail clover. Dr. Johnson explained to us how do you plant imperial whitetail clover to get a good stand and a good production. Well, Ray, the first thing and the most critical thing to do to plant and get a good stand of imperial whitetail is to first select the proper site. Then we need to properly prepare the land. After that, other things will fall in place. You need an area with good moisture, but not a lowland swamp that will be flooded all spring. At the same time, avoid deep sand or thin, droughty soil. Bottom lands are usually more moist than upland or hilltop soil, so look for this type site. Now, most soils will usually need a fertilizer and possibly some lime. The way you determine this is simple, and it probably won't cost you more than $5. You take a soil sample. All you have to do is to go to your local soil conservation service or county cooperative extension office 
Look them up in your telephone book under the name of your county or the U.S. government, Department of Agriculture. They will provide you a special one-pint container for the soil, along with complete instructions. Simply scoop enough shallow soil from several sites to fill the container. Don't take a deep sample, because you're not going to plant deep. Take the soil from the top two or three inches of the ground. I want to emphasize again the importance that we at the Whitetail Institute place in taking the soil sample. You cannot look at a soil, tell how much fertilizer it needs, whether it needs lime, and if it does, how much. I want to emphasize that different soils react differently with regard to lime and also with regard to, to fertilizers. So the only way you're going to know is to take a soil sample, have it analyzed by a reputable laboratory and let them make a recommendation on your particular site. The next step is to plow or disc the land. If you own a tractor, of course, you can do this yourself. Otherwise, you can usually hire a neighbor to do it for you. You might even rent a tractor. Ideally, you should prepare the land four to six weeks before you plant. If this is the first time the land has been plowed, you may need to disc it two or even three times. This will destroy the weeds, as well as allow the soil time to accumulate moisture. Add the recommended fertilizer and plow. If soil testing service is just not available, a general recommendation is four to 600 pounds of a 612-12, triple eight, or triple 13 fertilizer. Clover seed must be inoculated to grow properly. The usual way is to add the bacterial inoculant to seed at planting. This is messy, time consuming, and often a failure. Imperial Whitetail is inoculated for you prior to bagging. A protective seed coating has also been added that further ensures inoculation and a vigorous seedling growth. What you need for clover is a firm seed bed. Otherwise, it will be too deep and the clover won't be able to push its way to the surface. This is really important. And if you're going to mess up your planting, this is where you can sure do it. So after you plow your food plot, put something behind the tractor and go over it again to smooth it and to add firmness. This can be some kind of brush, a piece of chain leak fence, or a special implement known as a cultipacker. Just get the ground smooth and firm. Dr. Johnson, here's something we put together for the fellow who doesn't have a real cultipacker. We call it the poor man's cultipacker, and it really works. We made it from a four by eight foot piece of chain link fence attached to a four by eight foot piece of thin plywood. It's light enough for one person to assemble, and it fits into a pickup. We put wood pallets on the chain link and added cinder blocks for weight and balance. We can even pull it with a four wheeler. The wire mesh of the chain link fence helps break up and smooth the soil while the weighted plywood packs and firms the soil. As you emphasized earlier, Dr. Johnson, the purpose of a cultipacker is to create a smooth, firm seed bed, and this simple piece of homemade equipment does the job and gets us ready to plant. As you know, our experience with deer hunters across the nation over the years has shown that the most popular way of sowing imperial whitetail clover has been with a simple, hand-operated seed spreader. We like these spreaders because they apply seed evenly over about 35 feet while you walk across the field. There's even an adjustment on it so you can put out about eight pounds per acre, which is what we recommend. Now, Dr. Johnson, what happens next? Once you have put the seed out, cover it slightly and establish a firm seed soil contact. This is the same thing that you'd do if you were planting a garden beside your house. You only want to barely cover the seed no more than one fourth inch. You can drag that piece of brush or chain link fence over it again, or use a cultipacker again. If nothing else, just drive over the seed with the tractor or with the four wheeler. Now, the first plant that will appear is our jump start ingredient. In a few weeks, it will be joined by the other clovers that make up the Imperial Whitetail blend. That's it, and it really couldn't be more simple. It does not require a great deal of time, and it really isn't that expensive, especially considering what you're going to gain. Once you've planted, just stand back and wait for it to start growing. We recommend planting in the fall or the spring, depending on where you live. 
You'll have your clover well established and underway within about four to six weeks prior to deer season beginning. Planting dates for your area are on the back of every bag of seed. It won't take long for the deer to find it or to start eating it, believe me. If you really want to see how much the deer are using your clover, make a roll basket and put it in your clover. Because the deer can't eat through the wire, this clover will continue to grow. You'll be able to judge the amount of usage by comparing the heights of the clover inside the basket and outside. Once your clover comes up, there is not a lot you need to do to keep it growing. You may want to fertilize it again in the spring, but this may not be necessary. Like a well-kept lawn, this clover thrives with usage or mowing. You may want to mow it down with a bush hog to about four or five inches just to maintain vigorous growth. Here at the Whitetail Institute, we've made a major commitment to the development of a highly nutritious food supplement that actually provides a strong benefit to the deer themselves. We believe Imperial Whitetail Clover provides that benefit, and we stand behind it because we know it works, and so do a lot of other planters and hunters. Robert Murphy in Columbia, South Carolina, wrote us a letter recently and stated, we planted our Imperial Whitetail Clover on a power line break. On October the 20th, 1989, we saw 60 deer in the clover. We killed four eight-point bucks, three six-point bucks, one four-point buck, and one spike on the opening weekend in and around the clover. We at the Institute know that deer need three ingredients, age, genetics, and nutrition to produce good antlers and good healthy body weights. You can give them that nutrition with Imperial Whitetail Clover and our newest breakthrough, Imperial 30 out 6 Mineral Vitamin Supplement. You know, one of the other things that I've got to mention, and we're so happy to have it available now, after years of research and study, is Imperial Whitetail 30 out 6 Mineral and Vitamin Supplement. Now this is a product that was developed after years and years of study, not only by the Institute, by some other experts, biologists, and nutritionists from across the country. And we were very fortunate here at the Institute to have a man living not too far away that's devoted most of his professional life to nutrition, and specifically nutrition for wildlife, and more specifically, for deer. Now that man is Brent Camp, and Brent, I want to tell you, we're pleased to have you here at the Institute, and we want to ask you a few questions that would relate not only to our clover product, Imperial Whitetail Clover, but Imperial Whitetail uh, Mineral and, and Vitamin Supplement. Tell me this, how in the world did you ever get involved in uh, supplementally feeding minerals and vitamins uh, to wildlife, and specifically deer? Well, Ray, it was a natural extension of my involvement with nutrition uh, for farm animals. Deer are multi-stomached animals like cattle that convert roughage or fiber into muscle tissue, fat, bone, and in the case of the female, milk. The similarities are numerous, and as scientific research into large animal nutrition contributed to the knowledge base, it was logical to apply this knowledge to deer. In other words, what you're telling me, I, I, I take it, Brent, is that you took the application of, of all your studies and research, and you, I know you, you've dealt, developed uh, products for various animals throughout the world. What you've been able to do now is apply that knowledge specifically to deer. And how many, how many years, roughly, have you been involved in the pursuit of the, the, the really the best possible formulation for, for deer? A little over 18 years. And it, it took a while to really come up with the exact mix of what we thought would be the best thing. Well, tell, tell me this, and I think this is a, probably the most important question. Uh, what precisely, in all the development stages, makes 30 out 6 whitetail, Imperial Whitetail 30 out 6 unique? Imperial Whitetail 30 out 6 deer mineral provides wild deer the opportunity to balance their individual needs and requirements for essential minerals and vitamins that they need for optimum growth and reproduction. The vast majority of browse that deer consume falls far short in supplying all of the essential minerals that they need. 30 out 6 deer mineral is a complete mineral supplement and covers all the bases. So, so really what you're saying, Brent, and we feel great confidence here at the Institute because the product has been field tested now beyond uh, anything that's ever been done in uh, mineral and, and vitamin supplements we've, that we've tested throughout the country. You're telling me that the Imperial Whitetail Clover coupled with 
Imperial Whitetail mineral and, uh, and vitamin supplement can assure the excellent chance of a man to use it and see the results with bigger, more quality racks on top of the heads of the deer in his community. That's exactly right, Ray. Well, I, I gotta ask you one other thing that a lot of folks wonder about. How in the world have you and your mastery, and I know you've done a lot of work on this, how are you gonna, how do you, how, what are you gonna do to encourage a deer to go out here to one of these licks that we're going to provide and use it? What, do you, what have you done? Part of the development of a, the deer mineral centered around how to attract deer to the mineral and how to encourage them uh, to consume relatively unpalatable mineral elements. In 30 out 6 deer mineral has an exclusive enhanced scent and flavoring agent that has proven to be an effective attraction to accomplish our consumption goals. And most important of all, 30 out 6 has been field tested by across the U.S. and we know from the test reports that it works. Well, I do know that's a fact because I, I know that we've taken hundreds of, of people in the last year or so, uh, sort of blind taste testers, we'll call them, who went out and actually used the product in a private, confidential way, tested it on their own uh, properties, and know that it works. Uh, the, the, first of all, you know, you can, you can offer the best medicine in the world, and I can remember as a kid some of the awful medicines my mom used to make me take. She'd, <laughs> she'd mix it finally with some, uh, something sweet and would make castor oil, for example, and God forbid ever having to take castor oil. But you know, we know that the deer will, will use it. We know they like it. We know it's got all the taste. It's got the scent enhancers in it. But the question I've got to ask you is how long after you put it out in the field can a hunter expect to wait before he sees you, deer actually using it? How long does it take, weeks, months, or what? Significant changes in an individual deer, such as increased body weight, antler size and reproductive efficiency takes time and a combination of numerous factors. It's difficult to predict exactly when an individual deer will visibly exhibit physical changes from having 30 out 6 included in its natural diet. However, it's safe to say that from the first ounce consumed, the individual deer is on the way to increased health and productivity. Under normal conditions, physical changes could be observed in one year. To accomplish this, it is vital that 30 out 6 be made available year-round to deer. If the concerned sportsman does that, the deer will do the rest. Now Brent, for the last 15 minutes or so, we, we've given everybody a college degree on farming and, and showed them how really simple it is to plant imperial whitetail clover. But the question I've got to ask you is adding the mineral and, and vitamin supplement, the 30 out 6 product, just how complicated is that to, to apply out in the field? Well, rather than me tell you, Ray, I'd rather show you. Okay. Let's go do it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Brent, here's a, a patch of Imperial Whitetail Clover right here. But up in here is a bunch of deer all back in these woods. It's bunches of acres, and I, I would imagine we've got scores of trails coming into this, this patch and others around the place. But there's one real good trail coming in here. A lot of deer use it, and I want to see if you think putting one of our licks in near that, about 40, 50 yards back in here would be a good idea. This would be a great place, Ray. Let's go find that trail. Right, it's right over here. You can't miss it. All right, Brent, uh, right here, hold up where you are here, Brent. You can see, see a pretty darn good trail coming down, a little slope. Yeah. Now, this is this is just one of several trails that come into this, uh, this particular patch of Imperial Clover, but uh, I, I, I know that you've told me for years you've tested it far away from food plots, and it it will work there just as oh, well. Oh yeah, it doesn't necessarily need to be around a food plot. Uh, any good, well-worked trail such as this is just an ideal location to get off of and, and start your mineral lick. All right, well what we'll do then is walk up, get up about what, 40, 50 yards maybe off the field. That'd be good. Or maybe just something, well, I want to be able to get to it because we're going to come back in a few weeks or whatever and check we'll it. We'll have to to recharge it. All right, but uh, we'll just get up here a little ways and, uh, and find a spot and let's see if we can't plant some of it. Let's go. All right. All right, Brent, we're, we're about six foot off that trail from where that we were standing. Good. Let's try it right here. Okay. And all we do then is just, just scrape it, the, uh, the rubbish, leaves and limbs or whatever out of the way, push them back, and just go to work. And just dig down about, what, about six inches? Four to six inches. Okay, Brent, now we've uh, we got an area here probably that I've broken up 
real well that you described it. That Probably about six that. foot, six inches deep. Right, about a two foot square. Yeah, two, two and a half foot. Now, it's chopped up good and I've got it clean. Now all we do now is just, is put the Imperial right across the top of it and cut right. it in. That's it. All right, well show me how you do it. I'll, you do that and I'll do the cover. We use about half a bag on each lick, is that right? Right, just about a half a bag. All right. Now, now you've covered it. Boy, that stuff smells good. Doesn't it, though? Man, you smell it? It even tastes pretty darn good. Anyway, just go ahead and, and take it like this and just cover it up. Turn it over just like you're mixing uh, biscuits or cornbread mix. Just cut it into the dirt. Turn it over, work it in good. Dress it down nice and easy. We've been working now about six minutes. Now, what's the next that, step? That'll do it. We can put a little bit on the top just as a little extra. About like that. All right. And we just need to get out of the way. To leave it, go to the next place. That's right. All Let's right. go find the other place. Now, Brent, we got about seven, seven minutes probably invested in the time. Yeah. Now, under normal circumstances, What's the normal time frame we need to come back and, and expect? I've seen them before many times where they just dig them up and lick it and, they, and they'll have to eat the dirt, won't they? Let's give about 14 days, really, for them if, if, to come and find this spot. And seven to 14 days, but we would not want to be coming back every day and, and disturbing the area where we've got this uh, lick started. So seven to 14 days, let's come back and check it. And as you can see, with the ground like it is, as soon as the deer comes up, we're going to know it because we're going to see footprints and holes in the dirt. and Then you're going to get a feel for how frequently they're using it and how much of the mineral they're consuming. Well, what, it, 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 the licks I've seen, some of the experimental plots, and even the pictures the field testers sent us, uh, they actually rooted a darn hole in the oh, ground. Oh, this will end up being a hole in the ground. All right, so what we're going to see is an indenture that's, that's actually in there. That's right. This will end up being a hole in the ground. And when we come back to recharge it, we put the mineral in there again mm -hmm. and loosen up the soil at the bottom of the little shallow hole. Here. Yeah. Well, I noticed when I started and was clearing it away, I, 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 moved, I removed just a little bit of the dirt to compensate for the amount of, uh, of uh, Imperial Whitetail uh, mineral and vitamin uh, uh, I put in here. But uh, just don't worry about it. Just don't keep, know. It's, keep adding to this just as keep, it's needed. Keep, once they start frequenting this spot, we keep putting the mineral back in the same spot. All right, that's the deal. Well, I will have, we'll make it up. That didn't take long. I think I can no. do a couple more. <laughs> okay, okay, let's do it. Okay, Brent, here's a spot. Let's, let me clear this spot. It's just a little bit further back. Let's clear a spot here. Knock the stuff back. The first thing I'm gonna do, as you suggested, is get rid of some of the soil just a little of the surface soil. Right. To make some room for the minerals and vitamins. Well, Brent, here is a, here's another one that's pretty typical. It's about, just about 10 feet from the, right. 12 feet from the area. Now, I've got about two and a half foot here, broken down about, oh, probably eight inch, six, eight inches deep. Right. So just lace it on there for me, right. the other half of the bag. Man, you can smell it. Jumps right out at you. All right, now, take it and just kind of turn it over, just like we did, and work it in, into the soil, because they're actually going to eat the dirt as well, aren't they? That's right. They're going to get all of it. Now, why do you reckon you do that? Well, this kind of gives them an idea, of course, mixed in with the dirt, that it is a natural deposit. And as you know, they are peculiar about uh, their diet and things being natural, anything unnatural uh, seems to kind of shy, they shy away from it. Yeah. And so this gives them that natural-like uh, appearance. Well, I've seen holes as deep as a foot and a half, two foot deep. Oh, gosh, and, uh, yeah. Some of those pictures I saw earlier uh, were unbelievable. Now, we finished it. Now, you suggest when you leave, leave a little bit in oh, the bag to you, sprinkle. You could just do a little, whoop, just a little bit on top there. That'd be fine. All right. So they can just... We're going to readily find it. Yeah. And then what? Let's get out of the way. All right. Good deal. We're gone. Now you 
seen the magic of planting Imperial Whitetail Clover and the tremendous improvement it can make on the quality of bucks on your hunting land. You've also just seen the additional importance of offering your deer herd that extra nutritional bonus with the use of 30 odd 6 mineral and vitamin supplement. Now, hang on for the newest innovation from the Whitetail Institute as we introduce you to the fun and excitement of the effective use of deer decoys. You may be surprised to know that the use of decoys is an age-old hunter's trick for luring wildlife into range. As a matter of fact, decoys go back more than 3,000 years. You've seen duck decoys, geese decoys, turkey decoys, but now there's a decoy that really works for deer. Most of us hunters have spent hours and hours in tree stand looking and waiting for that big buck to come into view. The problem is, as we all know, that he usually doesn't come out while we're sitting there. He seldom comes out on the field unless he sees another deer on the field or after black dark. The typical buck in America is killed at about one and a half years of age. A few bucks, however, do survive to be four or maybe five years old. Almost every area in the country has at least a few cagey old big deer, but everybody knows they don't get that big by feeding in the fields before dark. They're too smart for that. So, how do we get these deer to come out into the open before dark or right after daylight? Well, there's a way to solve this problem. The Whitetail Institute, in conjunction with the great people with Flambeau products, now offers a new development in deer hunting, simply the deer decoy. You've seen how successful decoys have been with other wild game. Now you can see how they work for deer on your hunting property. Now, let's examine the habits of the big buck for just a moment. In your search for that big buck to hang on the wall, there are four facts you've got to keep in mind. Number one, bucks use fields mostly at night. They are curious, but they are cautious. Number two, keep in mind, bucks most often let the does check things out by sending her out on the field before he ever takes a, a good serious look. The third thing to keep in mind, bucks are very, very territorial, particularly during the rut. Fourth and last, bucks make mistakes, big mistakes during the rut when they're thinking about the girls. And we know these facts, so let's see how the, the flambeau decoy can help us get that big buck. Flambeau's fine family of decoys stand among the very best for a variety of reasons. Portability, realism, very reasonable price, and effectiveness in drawing deer. The Flambeau decoy can be easily disassembled. All parts are stored inside the body, which allows for safe and easy carrying. Other decoys that can't be broken down are too dangerous and too cumbersome to carry through the woods. The more realistic the decoy, the better it performs. The posture is important, and Flambeau has the posture of every decoy they make. The Flambeau decoy looks real. Deer are much too smart to be fooled by cardboard and two-legged foam targets. A comparison of prices show that the decoy by Flambeau is considerably less expensive than many other decoys, even though it has all the special characteristics of the more expensive decoys. Most of the decoys cost more than $100, many as much as five to $600. Now, the most important question to ask is does the decoy work? We place both the ready doe and the grazing decoy in many different test locations. The flambeau decoy is one, more lifelike in color, two, disassembles for easy carrying, three, is very lightweight, weighs about 15 pounds, four, extremely durable, and five, and most important, very reasonably priced. In the woods and in the fields, it performs phenomenally. The idea isn't to get the buck to charge and attack the decoy, but to get them to come into range for you to get off that gun or bow shot. Planning and placement of your decoy is vital to the successful hunt. Finding an area where deer are moving is very important. Look for trails, rubs, scrapes, or any other deer signs. The decoy needs to be in a location that can be easily seen by the deer approaching the field. Anyone knows that a deer's keen eyesight lets him see movement. 
If the decoy is placed in the middle of a thicket, the deer might not see it. Placing the decoy on the edge of a field or even in the center of the field can increase the chance of your decoy being spotted. Another factor is the wind. Always try to be downwind from where you think the deer are coming out. During the magic days of the rut, finding a scrape line along with the use of a decoy, either standing or grazing, can be very effective. As a matter of fact, in our experience, we found that both deer, in conjunction with each other, can be the most effective combination. Most dominant bucks know every other buck in their area. A stranger that might appear is not a welcome sight at all. When the dominant buck sees a decoy, he knows instantly that guy shouldn't be in his territory. When the big boy comes onto the field or comes into the area where the decoy is located, he should be an easy target for the hunter, be it a bow hunter or a gun hunter. As the deer comes out, he will be distracted and much less likely to notice any possible movement that might be a giveaway as a hunter might raise his rifle or draw his bow. And believe me, it works. Both of Flambeau's fine decoys come in doe form, but an antler kit is available. The use of more than one decoy has proven over and over again to be helpful. It gives the buck added confidence that everything is okay. The Flambeau decoy are easy to transport and easy to carry. We recommend that you never leave a, a deer set up overnight in a place where you plan to hunt. This would allow the deer at night to check it out and it will be much less effective. You can leave it near the area lying down and simply cover it up with a piece of camouflage. Then when you're ready the next day, the next morning perhaps, simply set it up where you want to hunt. Never carry the decoy assembled or disassembled. Let me tell you, say that again. Never, ever carry the decoy assembled or disassembled without an abundance of hunter orange for yourself and your decoy. These decoys can be your inexpensive ticket to killing the big buck of a lifetime. If you have any questions whatsoever or you'd like information of any sort, simply call us here at the Institute. Our number is toll-free, 1-800-688-3030. And you can become one of the thousands of deer hunters across the nation who are taking advantage of this fantastic new hunting concept. It's fun, and buddy, it works. And by the way, for you serious turkey hunters, the Whitetail Institute also has available these incredible lifelike three-dimensional turkey decoys by Flambeau. Call us now on our toll-free number. If your mission in hunting is just to pull the trigger, then Imperial products are not for you. But if you want to improve the, your deer quality so you can kill a deer that you'll be proud to clean in front of the barn instead of having to hide behind the barn, then our products, Imperial Whitetail Clover, our 30-odd-6 mineral vitamin supplement, and Flambeau's quality deer decoys can help you achieve that goal. These products can be purchased by writing the Institute at Route 1, Box 30 or 6, Pent Lala, Alabama, 36043, or for immediate shipment and immediate information, simply pick up the phone and call us at toll-free 1-800-688-3030. Great savings can be yours by calling us 1-800-688-3030. Better bucks can be yours. Good luck and good hunting. <laughs>